I couldn't find the theme song for the longest time. You notice that? Couldn't find a theme song. Oh well. There you go. Hey, it's Marky Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. The name of the program is Tri-City Sports Now. You know what we do. We own the Tri-Cities on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Because I've got the best guests, the best prizes, the be the hardest hitting opinions, and really, I think, more in tune contemporarily with what's going on in sports, because what's everybody talking about? Look, I mean, you know, the national shows, the local shows, of course, I want to give my own take on this, but we're all talking about the U.S. WNT. Now, I've got a lot of, you know, old school sports that couldn't get me to watch women's soccer, and I understand that, folks. I, I mean, and I'm going to talk about that here in just a matter of seconds, really, with Marky's monologue. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about who we're going to have on the show today. Jerry Bonkowski can't make it, so he can't talk about the NASCAR race that it took two days to finish and it wasn't even completed. And then who won it? We don't know who he is, but I think it's a good thing. Anyway, I will talk NASCAR at one, but it'll be me and you. Instead, yes, USWNT, that is the story, and I've got an old friend. Got an old friend from Pittsburgh, okay, there you go. By way of New York, he's from Hicksville, New York. Used to like to tell us that, you know, he's from the same high school as Rick Pitino. Uh, he is now a soccer writer. And although the soccer site that he writes for is basically about Pittsburgh soccer, I don't really expect you to go to Pittsburgh soccer now and be an everyday uh, reader. My friend John Krasinski did write on that site a column about the USWNT, and it was, I know John, I've, I've known him since I went to Point Park with him, and I know that he's, uh, you know, this is sort of column that I expect him sort of write, which is, can't we just all watch and enjoy the soccer? He makes a comparison to Megan Rapinoe that I think is pretty good that I'm going to talk about here. And the thing is, I'm not sure that we can just talk about the soccer. I'm not sure that in 2019 now, sports are all about who's going to win. That's just, I know it's, what are you talking? I'm saying that I'm not sure who's going to win the championship is the only storyline now around sports and that we are polarizing ourselves. Sports are fitting into cultures. All of that. Anyway, 115, I'm going to talk to John Krasinski. Uh, he's a soccer writer, like I said, an old friend from college, if you will. But he's got a good column. It's on PittsburghSoccerNow.com. I haven't forgotten, you know, when I wrote for the Post-Gazette for seven years or, you know, lived on Gettysburg Street as a kid or whatever. You know, I haven't forgotten about that, even though I've been in Tri-Cities on and off since 86. So, I mean, but friendship, yeah, you know. But he's got a good column. So even though, like I said, I don't really expect you to read Pittsburgh soccer now every day, unless you happen to be from Pittsburgh and are a soccer fan. But what I expect is that you can read this column. It's pretty good. 1.30, we're going to do what we always do. Talk to SoCon John Hooper. Mid-Major Madness, Medium.com. He's ranking the football players. Chad Nigel has some football players this week. But now I can sort of focus in on who's going to finish where. Last week we kind of were discussing, okay, Wofford the favorite. Number two would be uh, Furman. And then ETSU. Hmm. Also maybe just a little bit about, you know, there's this report about James Madison joining the American and I kind of thought that that was just some scribe in Fargo, North Dakota, to tell you the truth. Uh, but it is kind of intriguing. And, all right, what if that did happen? I don't think it is. 
because Harrisonburg's the 175th largest market out of 210. You know I talk about this all the time. Tri-Cities is dropping. It's 102. Used to be 92. Now it's 102. And it really bothers me when I see some other markets advance, try to become more cosmopolitan. You know. But we got to talk about what happened yesterday because to ignore it, I don't care if you're a women's soccer fan or not. I don't care if you are some, one of these people that call it communist kickball, which <laughs> sports changed on Sunday when the United States women's national soccer team won the World Cup fourth. You know, you heard it on the sports update along with Elise Beefton. Was that what he called it? Anyway. The USWNT have unquestionably made America the leading soccer country in the world for their gender. Think about that. Is how many times? So why doesn't soccer take off in this country? It's so popular everywhere else. I'll get to that here in a second. Why? Is that? But what's a better soccer country for women now than America? Now think about that. Because that means America is now a soccer country. But it means that if the sport is to grow, it's probably going to grow more through its female participation than its male participation. And I mean, I knew, I once did a story, sports writing days, uh, well, I say that, I still do the column, medium.com every day, I still freelance stuff, but uh, I was a staff writer, Wheeling Intelligence, all right, there was a football player, played for West Virginia, I mean, Mike Loretto, and I wrote about him. He was making, he was trying out for the Steelers, and he made the team. I think he played for the Steelers, reserve defensive back, for a year or two, middle of the last decade, beginning 2006. Check it out. Anyway, I was doing a story, and he said he grew up playing soccer, but he was from Ohio. Ohio's a big football state, and I don't mean F U T B O L. And essentially, peer pressure said, you know, try American football. We're now in the status where I gotta say American football instead of just football, you know. And he did, and he eventually became a professional, so he made the right choice. But he said, you know, they made fun of me for playing soccer, basically. So I started, you know, but strapped on a helmet and began hitting people, all right, you know. But look at just what the USWNT has done. Uh, in addition to now, we're a soccer country. It's just a female soccer country. And bigger than any, you know, soccer country in the world when it comes to female success, participation, all that, USWNT is probably going to make more money than its male counterparts. Okay? I mean, uh, they're likely going to be paid more money as well because there's that big suit. They're bringing in more money. And, all right, I mean, he, you know, it's gotten to the point, and I know that the equal pay for equal work debate, there is, you know, a lot of controversy around that, because there is no female equivalent for a highly paid job like Major League Baseball player. But now, in soccer, there is. And you hear all this, should the WNBA be paid as much as the NBA? Well, when the WNBA starts bringing in $7.1 billion, $7 billion a year, yes, right now they bring in $25 million, according to our morning host, Clay Travis. So that's not going to happen. I mean, it's just like, you know, said, this salesman over here brings in a million dollars. This one brings in a thousand. Who's going to get paid more? I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't matter what their genders are. And I mean, I... Remember when I was in a management type position, I did not hire employees and say, oh, seniority was different now. But on based on gender, no, you didn't give this person six dollars or they were one gender and this person seven dollars an hour. I know minimum's now seven twenty five. So let's say you didn't give them nine this person nine dollars and that person ten because of their gender. No, we didn't do that. Uh homosexuality. In women's athletics, it's nothing new, and a large part has become accepted. But the USWNT demanded that you accept their sexuality. And one gets the feeling that future gay athletes, both male and female, will now become more accepted should they decide to come out. 
and the USWNT also made it acceptable for women to, female athletes, women athletes, to be outspoken. Megan Rapino is the new Charles Barkley, or if you prefer the new Muhammad Ali, because that's what my friend John Krasinski, in his column, he made the comparison, that's why I want to have him on at 115. I think it's very apt, because talking about not going to the, pardon me here, but effing White House, which is what Rapino said, is as offensive to many as comparing Joe Frazier to a gorilla, which is what Ali did. And also, Ali, let's, you know, I mean, he's revered, and you got Dave Zarin writing books, you know, What's My Name, Fool, and, you know, all of this. When Ali became the face of boxing, what happened to boxing? There are a lot of reasons for that. But could it once be, you know, would somebody just tell this guy to shut up? You got, you know, American culture is now as polarized by politics as it ever has been in anyone's lifetime that is still alive today. I mean, maybe since the Civil War. I mean, you know, something like that. That polarization and politicization has gotten into sports. For all intents and purposes, I've said this many a time, National Basketball Association should be the most popular sport in America. I mean, their media is so uncritical of it, for one thing, and then look at all the coverage it gets at ESPN. Enough to explain to you why, they've got $800 million and four more years riding on the NBA than they do any other sport, which would be the NFL. And I personally think in 2021, Monday Night Football calls it quits unless the NFL Network picks it up and starts to use it to try to get on more cable households or whatever. But it why is it having trouble passing baseball in popularity? I mean, I mentioned this last year's NBA All-Star game drew a lower rating than the fifth game of the 2018 Stanley Cup Final. Now, there are a lot of reasons for that, but I think one of them is that the NBA has so embraced leftist politics that if you're a part of the country that likes Donald Trump, it is very difficult to embrace a organization, the NBA, where everyone from LeBron James to Greg Popovich seems intent on criticizing the president, which was the underlying theme of the U.S. WNT as well. Now, their fans chanted profanities at the president following the World Cup final in celebration. Guess what? It's that, although they were in France, they're Americans. I mean, you can speak out against your government. Even if it's ugly speaking out. Okay, it's about the most American thing you can do. But was it Trump that created the divide? He invited the team to the White House. Was he the one, or was it Rapino? Rapino is free to fall on this path. It may be the most distinctly American thing to do. She'll pick up a lot of supporters. She'll pick up distractors. But here's the deal. Can you imagine if after a Daytona 500 a group of NASCAR supporters, for whatever reason, you know, were chanting profanities at Barack Obama today or during his presidency? Now, the backlash then would be vociferous and it would be public. There's backlash going to be against the USWNT for, you know, this political polarization. It's just going to be private. That's the way it goes. You know, the difference between liberal and conservative. Now, remember when I told you about, you know, there were going to be people that were going to say, look, I mean, you couldn't get me to watch the Women's World Cup if it was, you know, and all this. But we've had for a long time women's soccer stars. Rapino is going to be the Alex Morgan is going to be a female soccer star. And right now, like I said, Rapino, the new Charles Barkley, or if you prefer, the new... By the way, when is Barkley ever going to run for governor of Alabama, right? I mean, people bought that line, hook, line, and sinker, and uh, yeah, okay. But you've got a circumstance where, you know, like John Krasinski said, comparing her to Muhammad Ali, but I'm not sure that's so good. And certainly around here, conservative East Tennessee, I mean, Muhammad Ali is the guy who wouldn't, you know, dodged uh, the army. 
Now, he may be different in San Francisco uh, in terms of popular opinion, but in the heartland, not necessarily. But you look at, I think, American history in sports, baseball, football, basketball, where did they become American institutions? I think that they were embraced by a culture looking to be distinctly American when their popularities took off, baseball, football, and basketball. Now, perhaps then the attention is given to soccer, which is not a distinctly American sport international at best. It is not a sport originally belonging to the United States. What does that say? Does it speak of a lack of contemporary patriotism in the country? Now, like I said, this defiance, this outspokenness, this independence of the USWNT, I think there are a lot of elements of that, <laughs> primarily, that is distinctly American. Absolutely. And you know what, Rapino, USWNT, they don't have to visit the White House if they don't want to. This the idea, oh, it's an honor, you should do that. You know, Tim Thomas, goalie for the Boston Bruins, eight years ago. Bruins won the Stanley Cup. Says, nah, I don't want to meet Barack Obama. That's not my guy. I'm not going to, I don't think that was his actual quote. But uh, he didn't go to the White House. So I'm going to sit it out. No, I don't want to go to the White House. I don't, and it was believed that he wasn't down with Barack Obama. He was criticized for it. Yes, he lost his credit card commercial. I think for comparison's sake, Rapino is going to be doing some endorsements in the future. I don't know if she's going to be the next Mary Lou Retton, but you get, there's a name from the past, but you... You know, I get that idea that, you know, you'd be surprised that she doesn't do some ads. You know. Now, is that a sign of modern culture? Perhaps. But here's the deal. When a sport so identifies with one side of the political coin, don't be surprised if the other side doesn't ignore it. And what that's going to do is just like the NBA. It feels, oh, it's international, it's growing, it's popular, and all that. Not as much as it could be, really. No. And I think that you're going to see that, yeah, because if you've got to identify on one side, you know, the political coin, if it can't be in every man's sport, or every woman as the case may be, that's polarizing, that's limiting your appeal. So don't be surprised if, yes, the other side ignores it, prohibiting the growth of soccer in the country and forever identifying it with a culture might not be able to shake.